In this episode of Detroit Performs, a mental health services organization teams up with the DSO, a portrait artist, and building success through music. It's all ahead on this edition of Detroit Performs. Funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the Fred A. and Barbara M. Erb Family Foundation, the Kresge Foundation, the A. Paul and Carol C. Scott Foundation, the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs, the National Endowment for the Arts, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Detroit Performs. I'm your host, DJ Oliver, and today I'm coming to you from the home of Janet Aronoff, who is hosting a very special concert featuring Kadima Mental Health Services clients who have been working with the Detroit Symphony Orchestra musicians for the past eight weeks. Now I'll be here the whole show, but first, let's see what this performance is all about. Music is a way to connect with people. And the sun begins to shine. There are people with gifts and talents and struggles like all of us have. I see my freedom from across the way. They're some of the most eager students I've ever seen, <laughs> never worked with, which really makes it enjoyable. I needed help. My mom got me to come here and it's helped me that they've had a lot of activities so I get out more, you know, talking with people, socializing. Kadima serves people who are struggling with uh, typically chronic and persistent mental health challenges who need support to be able to live independently in the community. Kadima's Creative Expressions program was started to provide the people we serve with opportunities to experience the arts and then to have that integrated with their formal treatment goals. Studies go back years showing the benefit of participating in arts programming for people with mental health challenges. We were introduced to a number of arts organizations, including the Detroit Symphony Orchestra, that um, come and work with the people we serve. Music is important for therapy because it helps people get in touch with their emotions. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high. We need to really feel in our lives in order to get better. And music just kind of helps that come out in a really honest way. Members of the DSO, they come to us and they, we, we interact, we play music together. I sing songs and I, uh, I enjoy doing that. Many people with mental health challenges are exceedingly creative, and so we have a number of very talented singers and flautists and violin players and trombonists and clarinetists and piano players and more. Well, for Joel, he plays trombone. He, his dad was like first chair in the DSO. You know, it's a great thing for him to be able to do. He, pl he plays trombone and he plays keyboards. For me, it's, it's great to have a place to come sing. We've been singing Hit the Road, Jack, Ray Charles, and uh, it's just a lot of fun. What you say? Remember the two fingers on the right hand? The uh, DSO musicians spend time working on pieces that our clients are interested in working on and learning more about. You listen and play. Listen, play. 
And then for some of our other folks who don't have a history of playing instruments, there was a music therapist who worked with them on some other skills that were integrated into their treatment plans. And the music therapy piece isn't to be discounted. For some of the people we serve, just engaging with a group in a group activity and learning some basic music skills or some more advanced music skills is a, a, a great way for them to be engaged in the project as well. So many of the people that we serve have been discounted through their whole lives. Have had it, so you know, people don't, don't believe in them or see the potential that they have. And what's been so wonderful about the musicians who are with us is they, they really see the potential uh, there. They're just smiling the whole time when they're engaged and uh, they're doing something they really love to do. They're experiencing something new. And we try to plan the session so that everyone can be involved. When we're doing a song, they have me lead sometimes, like last time. We had a lot of fun on Hit the Road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. In addition to just being able to spend some time with their friends and do something different, they're able to build some skills and build some confidence. Often, when we build and gain confidence in anything that we're doing, any of us, that translates to other areas of our lives. It's improved my confidence. I've performed in front of a group. It improves my confidence at karaoke, too. And it gives so much light. And it comes from the sky above. We culminate this experience with a recital, with a performance, an opportunity for the people we serve to show to their friends and family what they've learned and what they've built. doing the concert at the home of Janet Aronoff, who was one of Kadima's founders, and somebody who supported this project over, over the years. When you want. I think the people who come to the concert are going to get a wonderful musical experience, and it's an opportunity for everybody to see the people we serve as, as just that, as people. The participants here at Kadima have become much more confident with playing in front of other people. At first I was like, I had my eyes like practically closed, but I, I was looking down at the lyrics. But then when I connected with the audience, I felt that was the best thing. Brand new day. Brand new day. I think one of the exciting things about this program is it's an opportunity for, for everybody to learn. I think that the musicians are gaining a broader understanding of the world of mental illness. The people here at Kadima are just such interesting people and interesting to talk to and all have good hearts and willing to learn. With a little luck, these sorts of programs can help reduce stigma and provide more opportunities for people to talk about mental health challenges and seek care. We're thrilled these days more people are talking about mental health, are seeking out the care they need and getting the care they need. And it's imperative that we help people build up skills so they can live a rich and productive and meaningful life. Anybody interested in getting involved with Kadima who, you know, who has some issues, come on out, get involved. You'll thank yourself. You can learn more about Kadima Mental Health Services and the Detroit Symphony Orchestra, as well as all the artists that we feature on DetroitPerforms.org. Artist Linda Ward creates paintings that are deeply honest, instinctually visceral, and capture an essence of fleeting life moments, how it's felt rather than how it's objectively perceived. We caught up with her as she was creating her 500 portrait project. Take a look. Why I paint is because I have to. Because I have something to express that cannot be expressed any other way. It is, the work I do is just as much a part of me as my fingers are a part of me, or my hands, or my hair. And I do get into times in the studio where I'm in the studio so much and for so many hours that I go out and I'm trying to talk and socialize with people and I don't even know what to say. I don't even know how to say it. I'm tripping over my words. I'm having difficulty communicating my ideas. I grew up in East Taos and I grew up right on Lake Huron. 
I hated growing up there. I really did. My cousins all lived down in Detroit. I used to beg my parents to move down to the city anywhere with sidewalks. You know, you hear about all these things that people do and all these experiences that they have in the city. In a small town, those things just don't happen. It's something that you read about in a book or you see in a movie. You know, I've been living here in Detroit since 2008. And even now, sometimes I think about as a child what I would, what I dreamt of and I'm living it now. I started a series of 500 paintings in November of 2017 and I'm about two-thirds of the way through the project right now. Uh, this is the first major art series slash artwork I have done that is totally my own. That's not, you know, something that I'm doing design-wise for a product or for another company. And it's not, you know, a, a, a set design for a play. So when I started off this series, I did some preliminary paintings that are not included just to kind of get a feel for what I was going to do and how I was going to do it. You know, what size was I going to work in? What medium was I going to work in? And on what surface was I going to work on? Am I going to work on canvas? Am I going to work on paper? Are these going to be drawings? Are they going to be paintings? What am I going to do? And at first, I was coming up with lots of different subjects. So then I decided that I was just going to do portraits and just leave it at that. And I decided to do them in uh, groups of seven. So that way they have a similar color palette and a similar composition. And the reason for that is just to experiment and learn more about how color works together and how altering simply the amount or saturation of a color from one piece to the next dynamically changes how it's perceived and what kind of visual language it's using. If you take a painting that has the same colors, let's say one has like a grayish mauve and then one has like a really hot fluorescent yellow. And if you give one painting more of that grayish tone, than the other painting, it's gonna read completely differently. The emotion that comes through in that painting will be radically altered. So this series was a, a great exercise in understanding better how that comes together. But interestingly enough, the paintings often turn into people from my life. And it, the most interesting thing is, it's not people who are very close to me or ever been that close to me or ever been, had a, what I thought was a large role in my life. It, it sort of made me think about my life in a bigger way and the people who have come into my life in, in a bigger way and this idea of community. Art is a two-way street. I don't think that it is just about the artist and their ego. I think it also is a participatory process where the viewer is just as much a part of how this ecosystem works than just whatever the artist wants to say. And if an artist is trying to say something and it is lost upon the viewer, then the artist needs to go back and figure out how they're going to communicate this better. We're not machines, right, who create this art. And the difference between a painting and uh, a digital drawing of something that has not been created by a human, that's a computer digital drawing, is it doesn't have soul to it. And it needs to be imbued with some kind of soul or grace. Now let's check out some upcoming events happening in and around the D.
See how one program is changing the lives of inner city students in Baltimore, Maryland through a free during and after school music program. Or kids. <laughs> I seen it and I was like, wow, like music is fun. And so I thought to myself, like, how can I become one of them or do what they're doing? We're using music more as a vehicle to create a future filled with possibility for these kids. And we started an after school program with 30 kids. We're well over a thousand kids now. We serve them meals every day when they've needed help with homework and help with reading. We've brought in mentors and tutors. I have four kids now currently in the Orchids program. It's music, music, music every day. It shows them leadership skills. It helps them academic wise. They taught me how to play music. Also, they show me through hard times they'll be there and they always have my back and I want to do that for other kids too. Keith Fleming has been here since day one. He was accepted to Baltimore School for the Arts and he'll be attending there this fall in 2016. The kids see him and they see when he was corrected by his teachers, he didn't get defeated, he didn't shut down, he tried harder and he did better. What makes Orchid special is its intensity. It really gives them a sense of self-worth at a very early age that they're important and if they stick to something and they dedicate themselves to something, they can really open some doors. Their environment already is intense. You know, we're living in high poverty areas and broken family homes and so to combat that, the intensity of what we're offering them I think is very special and unique. Orchids is a beautiful program. The music makes me feel free and everything. I learn how to play with my heart, read music. I le digo, toca una canción y ella me la toca y todo y para mí es muy muy bonito. This is Daphne's third year in the program. She's really focused. She's also a leader. She likes to work with her peers. The parents can really see the progression and how the kids start to internalize what it means to perform on stage, what it means to take care of your instrument and make sure that's safe. Now that I'm 10, I've probably done like 20 performances. And sometimes I say to myself, wow, I have done that much music. I can't believe it. And music is an incredible tool to use because music is non-judgmental. When you play a phrase on the tuba, on the violin, you're always right. There are a lot of things that we're combating in these communities, and, and it's serious stuff, but we have something that we can heal them with through music. We give them a place to go and something incredible to do. We open this whole world up to them that they can really pour all of their energy, all of their emotion, and all of, all of their mind and soul into. Orchids, rest position. One, two, moving it around. Moving it, moving it, moving it. Then when we get to a performance, and they are so happy and so proud of what they're doing, and I'm incredibly proud. 
I'm in the back, like wiping away the tears. Like, you know, I'm so proud of them. You played beautifully and I'm so proud of you. And I love that stuff. When you grow up feeling successful, you live a successful life and a life that feels fulfilled. And that wraps it up for this edition of Detroit Performs. As always, for more arts and culture, head to DetroitPerforms.org, where you'll find featured videos, blogs, and information on upcoming arts events. Also, check us out on Facebook and Twitter. I'd like to thank Janet Aronoff for having us in her home today. I'm gonna to check out the full Kadima and Detroit Symphony Orchestra concert. It is gonna be a good one. Until next Tuesday, get out there and show the world how Detroit performs, y'all. I'm DJ Oliver. Thanks for watching, guys. Funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the Fred A. and Barbara M. Erb Family Foundation, the Kresge Foundation, the A. Paul and Carol C. Scott Foundation, the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs, the National Endowment for the Arts, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.